Hello, welcome to episode nine of Self-Evident Truth with me, the Grumpy Old Vet. Um, I know there was some time between episode seven and eight, and I had a lot of people asking, when's eight going to come out? And I uh, produced eight just a couple days ago, and now I'm producing nine. Well, that's kind of how life is, isn't it? Um, sometimes run slow and sometimes things happen fast and you just have to be prepared for it. And so there's some things, some developments that have happened that I thought um, you all would be interested in. So I thought I'd uh, produce nine tonight and, and um, share that information with you. Now I want you to think back. Um, I'm sure this is uh, something that everybody can identify with. Uh, I don't think this was exclusive to myself in in growing up, but um, how many of you played sports? Did you play sports? You play sports in 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 uh, either summer ball or or in school, junior high, uh, high school. And there was always that one kid, wasn't there? That one kid that either his dad was the coach or his mom was the teacher or his dad was on the school board. He wasn't the worst player, but he wasn't the best player. He was pretty, pretty medium, pretty middle. Um, didn't work as hard as everybody else, but was always on first string, played every game. Um, you know the type that that when we'd lose, they'd be in the locker room crying crocodile tears. How was everybody else on the team that lost the game for them? But if we win, um, you know, they would go on ad nauseum about the one three-point shot that they had that must have been the greatest thing ever and the reason why we won the game. This is the same kid that, you know, at the, the, the team pictures, they had to be right down front holding the ball or they had to hold the trophy if we got a trophy. And and uh, they were never, ever humble winners or gracious losers. Um, they, they just uh, weren't any good at that. They never learned that because of their political connection, either their last name or who they were re related to or, you know, what position their, their parents were, um, you know, what socioeconomic uh, spectrum they came from. You know, they might have been the doctor's kid or they might have been uh, <clears throat> a lawyer's kid or, you know, they, they uh, their family uh, was the well-to-dos in the town. I don't think I'm the only one that's experienced that. See, I, I grew up, I, I was taught that hard work and dedication uh, is what was rewarded. You know, there's some kids that will put in a lot of work and, and gain skill, and there's other kids that don't have to put in near as much work to gain the same skill. Or if they put in the same amount of work, they'll gain more skill. That's just an individual thing. That's just individuals. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the players and the kids, what they should be learning is how to be humble winners and gracious losers and how to put the hard work in and, and the hard work should be rewarded. Um, that's really what we should be teaching in sports. Instead, we turned it into a microcosm of politics and we taught kids the importance of having the right last name or the right connections or um, being from the right social economic spectrum, right? That's that's really what we taught. The problem is these, these kids grow up. They grow up and if they didn't learn the proper things that we should have been teaching, they, they learned the political spectrum. They learned politics. They learned um, how to have their own way, how to not put in as much work as everyone else, how to ride on the shirt tails of their last name or of uh, other people's achievements, not theirs. And they're always the ones that have to steal the limelight and they're the ones that will run for offices. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, you, you know who I'm talking about the Brent Leinigers in the world. Um, everybody's experienced that. 
<clears throat> well, Brent Leiniger uh, hired some very expensive lawyers, Dewey Cheatham and Howe, out of Lansing, and he sued the America First Party of Hillsdale. Sued me personally. Now, we have quite a few people come to our party meetings, um, the America First people. And, you know, there's anywhere between 50 and 150. In fact, um, the last one we had, we had about 240 people there. Now, for the 10 years that I went to the party meetings with the old guard, um, they never had a brand standard. They never did any community work. They never had hardly any people come to the party meetings. They never pushed forward any values. They never held anybody to any values that claimed to be Republican so that the people that were voting, that wanted to vote straight ticket, knew that the people they were voting for that were voting, that, they, that were running as Republicans, were true Republicans that had their same values. They never did any of that. In fact, the logo John Smith and I designed, um, the uh, T-shirts we did, um, they never did any of that. They, they never raised any money for any, for any uh, campaigns. They never raised any money for any community organizations. They never did anything um, other than meet at Olivia's and have their drinks and steak and, and then have their one hour meeting where they would allow the elected officials to come in and say whatever they wanted to say and they'd all praise them and go home. We are the ones that did the logo. We are the ones that did the brand standard. We are the ones that raised the party values. We are the ones that held people to those party values. We're the ones that did that. In fact, even Mike Shirky, when he got censured, commented on how much more professional that the party was being run, even though he was being censured. Even he recognized it. It was run much more professional and there was a lot more work put into it than what there was for the 10 years that I'd gone. <clears throat> so <clears throat> Brett Leininger got his decision from his from the judge. Now, let me take you back to um, <clears throat> the hearing that we had uh, prior to the state convention in the circuit court in Hillsdale, um, where they were going after us original six and Dewey Cheatham and Howe filed a 94 page uh, temporary restraining order on the new six, on the six new officers and uh, wanted to have that hearing that day. And uh, the judge made a decision on that and he said, you know, um, this decision is best served by MIGOP and the credentialing department making that decision and the precinct delegates in the state at state convention um, rather than a judge. Mm -hmm. But then he just did a 180 and filed a decision after su suspected um, ex parte communication with Dewey Cheatham and Howe uh, between Old Saver and Dewey Cheatham and Howe. And we're going to have the TR, uh, the J JTC look into that. Judicial Tenure Commission look into that and see uh, whether in fact that's true. Sure appears to be. So, uh, but then he, he goes 180 degrees and, and uh, uh, lets them pretty much violate whatever policy they want to, doesn't follow the judicial canons and files for uh, the anti-Trump party and, uh, and uh, Brent Leiniger. So Brent Leininger says that they want all of our hard work given to them by May 5th. See, he didn't, didn't want to put in any of the hard work. It's just because of his last name and his position and who his parents are um, that he wants this given to him. They didn't work for it. They didn't do anything. In fact, even now, their sad little meetings of the anti-Trump party garners about 18 to 25 people. That's it. And out of those 18 to 25 people, most of those people couldn't come to our party meetings and their excuse was, well, I don't have time. Well, Marnie Cast has made every one of them now, hasn't she? That's odd. Hmm. It's 
It's amazing what co-conspirators will do when they need to, right? Okay. So, um, I, we just re I just received a, a letter from Dewey Cheatham and Howe in which they now say uh, it's uh, the plaintiff's the plaintiff withdraw of amended order to show cause. So we were supposed to have a hearing on the 25th in which back just before the uh, um, state convention, when we had our hearing in the circuit court of Hillsdale County, the judge said it was better left up to the MIGOP to make that decision. He asked us all whether, uh, well, how we pled to the, um, you know, to the, uh, contempt. We all pleaded not guilty because none of us had committed contempt. Um, so now that the party has spoken, it's gone before all of the precinct delegates in the state of Michigan, about 24 to 2,600 people voted that the anti-Trump party in Hillsdale that's using Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe to go after the America First Party needs to, if they want to remain Republicans, recognized as Republicans, they needed to stop all of this crap in the courts. They need to stop their their uh, their. Um, uh, they needed to stop being that kid on the team. Right. And they didn't. So now they're withdrawing the uh, uh, amended order to show cause. But what they're doing is they're going after three people now because they want all of the stuff, all of the hard work that the America First people did. They didn't do any of that work. They were incapable of doing any of that work. But they want the accolades from it and they want all the spoils of it. Again, back to that high school thing I was talking about. The people that didn't do anything but depend on their political allies and associations to usurp other people's hard work and the other people that were doing the hard work don't get the recognition because they're not politically connected. Well, <clears throat> they're going after Dave Mosby, Josh Gritzmaker, and John Smith now. Brett Leininger wants to see them in jail if we don't give him what we earned. If we don't give him what we built. He didn't build it. Look how long his dad was in politics. Never came to the party meetings. He had the ability to build it. Never did. They had the ability all along to do all these things that we've done. They never did. So again, we put in all the hard work because daddy was the coach or mom was the teacher or dad was the school board president. Then somebody thinks that they deserve everyone else's hard work. That's really what this comes down to. You know, I've always been that guy that puts things in simplest terms, lowest common denominator. I like to summarize things and look at it. it. makes things a little bit easier. It's not as overwhelming and not as noisy when you can really get down to the crux of it and, and pick out um, really what's going on. And so I guess really what it comes down to is this, all of the people that are suing us, and some of them say that they didn't agree with it, but yet not a one of them's put a motion on the table in their sad little anti-Trump meetings or sought a second to that, to have Brent drop all this legal warfare. So I don't take them as genuine when they say that. I call us, I, I'm gonna call it what it is, that they're just liars. Um, they've all been involved in groups before. They know they can put a motion on the table. It says right there that their group is suing us. Well, if they're a group, then they can put a motion on the table for Brent to stop his actions. They can ask for a second. They can ask for a vote. And that can be put on the record. And then 
then what they're saying could be taken as true. But if they're not going to do that, then it's just a lie. It's a lie. They, they're part of it. They're, they, want the, they want that too. They want exactly what Brent wants. To not do the work, but gain the spoils. So I guess the question is, should government and politicians run the party, either Democrat Party or Republican Party? Or should it be the people, the supreme authority in the United States, we the people? Should it be the people that control the parties or should it be the politicians that control the parties? That's, I guess that's the first question that everybody has to ask themselves. Which would be better? Well, even the judge in his first turning down that that uh, that second TRO that Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe put in even said, yeah, it's probably best served left up to the people, the people of the state of Michigan at the credentialing or at MIGOP. Well, MIGOP spoke at the, at the uh, state convention, 24 to 2600 precinct delegates said, no, Brent needs to stop his actions or those people are not recognized as Republicans because they're not following the values. So I guess when you really boil this all down, here's how it stands. We've got all the elected officials in Hillsdale. Let me take that back. All but one elected official on a county level in Hillsdale using their political power and position because of what they've been elected to and going to the third branch of government, the judiciary, to get control of the political party of the Republican Party and to steal it away from the people who I personally think should be the voice of the party should be running the party, right? Because it's the people that these people go to, that these politicians go to, to ask to be in those positions to serve them. And the problem is they're not serving the people anymore. They're only serving themselves and pretty much shows it. So I guess that's what it really comes down to. And we, the people, are the supreme authority over the supreme law, which is the Constitution. I guess this decision has to be made by the people. Do we want the third branch of government judges deciding who should control parties? And should we have the elected officials, you know, that kid on the team who's connected? Should they be the ones, really, that are making the decisions for the party? Or should it be we the people? I guess that's the question. Not sure what the answer is. I guess that's what the fight's all about. But you're either in the fight or you're a spectator to it. Um, but something's got to be decided. <clears throat> what are we going to do? Are we going to let politicians using their government funded positions that we pay for to decide what our politics should be, to decide what our values should be, to decide everything for us. That sounds an awful lot like dependency and servitude to me, to the people. See, liberty's not safe. Servitude and slavery is, it's being a dependent. And our elected officials are supposed to be our servants, but they've turned it around. 
And if they can get the courts to do this, then they set case precedent. And the people will always be under their thumb. The people will no longer have liberty, but they will serve as indentured servants under politicians. So I guess that's the choice. Do you want to live with dangerous liberty? Or do you want to be a dependent under an elected official and them using your money to enslave you? I guess that's really the question. So, well, that's what I had to bring out tonight. I brought it out. I've done my due diligence. I've done my duty. Um, now when much is given, much is required and expected. So now once you know something, you can't unknow it. And so there's a requirement. There's a requirement for you as a citizen. There's a requirement for you morally and ethically. So think about it and make your decision. Thanks for watching episode nine of Self-Evident Truth with me, Grumpy Old Vet. Have a good day.